some drug like Rob. Yeah, we're recording right now. Oh, this is Rangers on the YouTube. Get out of my way. Hey, Ranger. She smashed the homies. Oh, Ranger. That's me. She smashed the Ranger. Hey. We will never get another sound like this again. The swag era, man. Truly one of the funnest yet weirdest times in hip hop. The time where everybody was rocking snapbacks tight neon jeans, and taking these little goofy pictures with the saturation on max. The slang existed. People said YOLO with a straight face. That's crazy. Although the swag era had its cringy moments, it was truly a fun time in hip hop. And nothing better reflected that than the music. The music in his era ranged from partying, smoking, or just simply swag. Hence the name Swag Rap. This was truly an interesting time. A time I don't feel gets talked about in full too often. So today, I want to speak on the swag era. From its birth out of the crank era, all the way until its death. With the rise of SoundCloud rap. It's time to talk in full about this weird time and place in hip hop we call the swag era. Let's get into it. Now most people would skip 2008 when speaking on the swag era. And it's understandable considering that Atlanta was still going strong in 2008. But it was in this year that the shift really started to take place, moving away from the crunk and more into the uppity vibe that we know as swag rap now. But me personally, I would probably even take it back to the year prior, 2007, Welcome. with Soldier Boy, at least in the dancing side of things. Because from 2007, from 2015, there was a hit dance every single year. And Soldier Boy is the reason why. No debate. Going back to 2008 though, people were still rocking the baggy clothes, fitted hats, and chains that go down to the floor. All of that was still going on. But change was the music. Starting with M.I.A. Paper Planes. I consider this one of the first swag rap songs. From the beat, from the way she used her voice, from the vernacular, with this song being one of the first times I even heard the word swag. M.I.A. was truly ahead of her time with this song, man. And you can even see her influencing other artists in the swag era, such as Krishan. This is one of the first songs you can truly call swag rap. And it doesn't stop there because right after this, we will get one of the first swag era anthems. Turn my swag on by Soldier Boy. Man, when I tell you, you was not walking in your classroom without hearing somebody humming this song. You was not walking outside without hearing a car ride down the street blasting this. And when I say there was no better feeling than waking up in the morning and having this song blast on MTV or BET, man. This song and Pepper Plains truly showed us that there was another era on the rise. But these two weren't the only ones cooking. Because although they had the sound, the kids down in LA had to look. While the rest of the world was still rocking baggy clothes, they decided it was time to get some clothes that fit. Maybe a little too much. And then their different style of dressing, they also started to move different. By picking one leg up and dropping to the ground, skipping in reverse and moving their hands from side to side, they created two of the biggest dances in this era. The Jerk and the Dougie. Although in this particular time, it wasn't as big. But locally, it was undeniably a movement. And with them uploading videos of them doing these dances on YouTube, they were planting the seeds of what will become a worldwide phenomenon. But before that would happen, we would get hit with not only a certified swag era anthem, but a song with one of the best beats of the past 20 years. Swag Surfing. This song is a timeless turn up classic, man. The energy that each member of the Fly Life youngsters bring to this song is ridiculous. And I already said about the beat, it's the horns on this song that truly make it legendary, Mike. This song single-handedly took swag to the next stage in 2009, but this next song solidified it. Now, remember when I said there was a movement going on in LA, but it wasn't yet global? That is until these two changed the face of hip hop for the next five years to come. Enter the new boys, Legacy and Ben J specifically. Like I said, these two saw what was going on in Kelly, made a song about it, uploaded to YouTube, and it took off. The once local dance is now a global phenomenon. Everybody and their mama became a certified jerker, man. Right? Not only did they make the jerk movement global, they also brought the key component to the swag era itself, 
And that's the fits. Gone were the days of the big white tees, fat baggy pants, man, and especially the fitted hats. Into the new era, bright colored t-shirts, Converse Vans, or retro Georgians, all topped off with a snapback. The new wave of hip hop was here, and the swag era had officially begun. Enter the new era, man. Everything feels more bright, vibrant, colorful, and just overall fun. We enter the year 2010 with the takeover of Young Money. They dropped Bid Rock in late 2009 and it took off this year, giving careers to people like Drake, Nicki Minaj, Tiger, with the addition of Lil Wayne, who was already going crazy in the 2000s. But as a unit, Young Money would go on to be the soundtrack for the swag era, man. With them bringing us hits like Miss Me, Rack City, Super Bass, No Worries, Starships, HYFR, and a Moto, but we gonna speak on that one a little bit later, man. Because before we do, we need to speak on the new faces of the swag era. First starting off with Travis Porter, who had a hit song for every single year of the swag era's peak. We got the Rangers, who was already known for the jerk movement. But around this time, they started getting into music. There was Roscoe Dash, who basically had the year 2010 in the palm of his hand, with songs like All The Way Turned Up and No Hands, which has become a house party classic. We got the Cold Flames, who had a little spark with their song Miss Me Kiss Me, and the Rich Kids, who I personally could not go a day without hearing in my house. My brothers had these dudes on the stereo blasting through the house every single day. But I wasn't complaining with songs like I See You, Bend Over, and nothing else to do. But there's one person who came on the scene and completely dominated this era. The one person who had everybody screaming Taylor Gang and made smoking a key factor in this era. The one and only Wiz Khalifa. Now he was already making a name for himself back in 09. But 2010 is when he really got his time to shine. Dropping his mixtape, Cushion OJ made him an overnight sensation. With songs like Memorize, Never Been, The Statement. But none of those songs would compare to what his 2010 hit, Black and Yellow, would do for not only his career, but also the culture as a whole. Man, once this song blew up, there were miniature Wiz Khalifas everywhere. Had cats saying Taylor Gang, it started smoking. They even started getting the fro with the little highlight in the middle, man. When I tell you he had this era in a chokehold, man, and not even to mention what he did with Young, Wild, and Free and Mike and Devin go to high school, but we, we gonna continue. Chris Brown was going crazy during this time. Got to mention that. He had deuces, drop it low, look at me now. And matter of fact, let's get into Chris Brown. Not only Chris Brown, but light skins. Because I feel like people really be forgetting that this wasn't only just the swag era, it was also the light skin era. And Chris Brown, Tyga, and Drake ran the light skin era, bro. <laughs> A lot of the stereotypes we know about light skin people now came from this era, from the emotional thing with Drake, the pretty boy act with Chris Brown and Tyga, who basically became a duo during this time, or the F-boy mannerisms, like it really all came from these three. Mainly, mainly. And you know, speaking of Drake, let's bring him back up, because I've mentioned the Moto like three times in this video already, let's get into this. Drake's 2012 hit, The Moto. It was on the radio every day, all day, everywhere. And it was sketchy, especially Lil Wayne's part. And with this song being so big, it left its influence, specifically in the slang category. The slang that this song brought up was YOLO. You only live once. And just like that, YOLO became the catchphrase of the swag era. Literally the second most used word in the swag era besides swag. The phrase was so big, I think somebody even made it into a song. But that's enough of the YOLO, man. Let's get into these dances. Starting off early 2010, we had the Dougie. And I already mentioned the Dougie back in the 0809 days, but 2010 is when it really blew up. Then came the Cat Daddy, which was one of my favorites because it was the easiest one to do. People started shuffling. I personally never seen this movement, but apparently it happened. And then we had the Yeet, which is kind of forgotten about, but it was one of the first dances that introduced this new style where the format is basically dance move, random stuff in the middle, then dance move again. The jerking was fading out during this time. So yeah, all those extravagant moves that, that was going on, it was starting to be long gone. Enter 2013, the first sign 
of change. As I already mentioned, the dances weren't as fun or extravagant. A lot of the swag era artists that I mentioned previously faded to obscurity, and as an effect, new artists was coming in and changing the sound. Into the Migos with their flow and cadence. Chief Keith with the drill scene, and Speaker Knuckles with his melodic flow and his beats. The fun and colorful sound of swag rap was fading away, and as a whole, the swag era was in its final days. The era was in its last days, Sounds were changing, and the swag was changing with it. Gone were the bright color shirts, neon jeans, in with the long shirts, ripped up skinny jeans, and bucket hats. But those filtered up pictures were still going crazy though. That ain't changed. The new artists were coming in the bolo and changing the sound forever. Chief Keith, Young Thug, Rich Homie Quan, Days Loaf, K Camp, the older artists that managed to survive that era, adapted. Things surely were changing. But not everything changed. The dancer craze was still going on. People wasn't jerking anymore, but there were new dances. We had the D-Lo Shuffle, which is one of the last few dances we had that actually required more than one movement. Then we got the Nene, which was one of my favorites at the time. This dance was undoubtedly everywhere in 2014. We had the Whip, which was very, very basic. Like there was nothing, you just swung your arm. <laughs> But but we we did it nonetheless, man. We did it nonetheless. And just to be clear, both the whip and Nene came out way before Silento was even a thought in anybody's brain, man. I Silento didn't start anything. He just made an instruction video. But other than those dances, though, that was kind of it. 2015 is what I would say is the official end of the era, man. By that time, there was no remains. It was all gone. The swag era quietly faded away but it was natural though people grow up we ain't gonna stay in the same thing forever man this was a good five-year run a fun five-year run it's an era that didn't overstay as welcome and we can look back at with fond memories now there is some people who are trying to be in the jerk movement back which is cool for real but at the same time i feel it's important to just let things go let that time period be that time period let that fond memory be that fond memory. You don't want to bring it back oversaturated and then destroy it. Instead, I hope that we could bring fun back to hip hop in a new way, in a fun, spontaneous way. Same way Swag Rack came, same way the new one is going to come. Now, what that era will be, only a time will tell. That's for the newer generation to decide. And with the way things are looking now, I say that time is only around the corner. <laughs>